understanding how to calculate the expected duration of an activity and its standard deviation is very interesting. Nevertheless, we like to apply this on a project. And we have to look at the project, we have to look at the calculation of every activity. And once we have calculated using PERT or three-point estimation, it doesn't matter, we find for every activity an expected duration and a standard deviation. In order to illustrate how we apply this to a project, I selected a very simple project which is composed about six activities. We have A, B, C, D, E and F and this is the network diagram. A, B and C have no predecessors. D has A and B as predecessor. C has no predecessor but E has C as a predecessor and F has two predecessors D and E. What we find here are two numbers. The first number is the expected duration of the activity and the second number is the standard deviation. What we have to do now is for every path calculate the duration. So we look at the different paths. We have the path ADF, ADF, which has a duration of 5 plus 3 plus 8 is 8 plus 8 is 16. So that's the first path. Then we have the path B, D, F uh, equal to 10 plus 3 and 8 is 21. And then the last path is C, E, F which is a path with a duration of 4 plus 7 is 11 of 19. And when we remember the definition of the critical path, the critical path is the path with the longest duration. In this case, this is the path BDF. What we have to do now is to look deeper into the standard deviation. So we have for B, we have a standard deviation, let's say here, standard deviation, which is equal to 2. For D, the standard deviation is 3. And for F, the standard deviation is 2. Now, we cannot add standard deviations. We know that, again, from statistics. So basically, we have to add variances. And when we look at the variances, we know that the variance is the square of the standard deviation. So we have the standard deviation to the square, which gives us 4 plus 9 plus 4. This is 8. It is 17. So the standard deviation here is in fact the square root out of 17. And I made an error here because I have here a standard deviation of 1. So I have to correct it. I took the duration, so I have 1, which is 1, and it gives us a nicer number. You see, I also can make some mistakes, so don't worry if you make mistakes. We have 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. What we know here is that for our project, the expected duration is equal to 21 and the standard deviation is 3. Now, based on that, we can draw or we can calculate the relationship between duration and probability. And when I look here at 84% probability, huh, we know that this is equal to 21 plus 3, so 24. Basically, it means in our project that we have an 84% probability that our project will be finished in less than 24 periods. Once we found all the numbers, when we found the duration of the project, the 50% duration, when we know the standard deviation, we can put that information in a graph. But first of all, 
when we look at the normal distribution or the standardized normal distribution, which has been constructed around zero, because we could use it for all different problems. Today, with Excel and other software, it is not necessary anymore, but we still use those probability tables for the normalized or the standardized normal distribution. So, uh, when we have the Z value, which means this is the number of standard deviations to the left or to the right of the average. So, when we have on the right hand side 50% plus something, we will find a positive Z value. For example, in our case, we had a duration of 21, a standard deviation of 3. When we put that in here and we put uh, 24 in here, we will find that the Z value will be equal to 1. When we are two standard deviations to the right, we find a Z value of 2 and three standard deviations, a Z value of 3. The percentage, the cumulative percentage that we can consider, that we can calculate, is a function of the Z value. And that's always fixed. For a Z value of equal to 0, we will find 50%, a 0 of 1, we will find 84% and something. We also have the formulas in typical software, worksheet uh, software. For example, in Excel, I have the norm as this function, which will give you the percentage, the cumulative percentage as a function of Z. You will find the details of this formula in Excel. There is all the exp explanation that you have to do. Now, when we look at the graph we can draw because of this information, we have the 21 with the 50% and we can draw this S-curve, this S-curve which links probability and the duration of the project. 21, standard deviation here, no added standard deviation, so we have the 50%. When we have 24, it's 21 plus one standard deviation. We find 84.13%, 27, 97.72%, and for 30, we find 98.87%. When we go to the other direction, 21 minus one standard deviation, we find 15%, then 2.28% and 0.13%. What can we do with this um, graph? Well, if somebody tells us we want to know uh, what is the probability that the project will be finished, for example, in 23 periods, we can look at this graph and say it will be something around 80%. If somebody tells you, I want you to finish this project in less than 18 periods or 18 days, I can say, well, uh, that's a problem because there is only around 16% probability that this is possible. This gives you a probabilistic view of your project. Now, what is wrong with this? Well, uh, this method, the PERT method to calculate the probability profile will only take into account the critical path. Now, what can happen? Well, just imagine that we have a near critical path, which is not 21 periods long, but let's say 20 periods long. It's very close. Now, as long as the standard deviation of that near critical path is larger than the, or smaller than the standard deviation of the critical path, it means that the S-curve is steeper, we will have no problem. But once we have a probability profile where, for example, the standard deviation is higher, there is more spread, so the S-curve is flatter, and at that moment we will have an intersection with our normal curve. Let's try to draw something like that. Let's say we have 20, 20 is our 50%, but the fact that the standard deviation is higher, we will have a curve which is more like this. 
and we find an intersection point. And basically what we see is from a duration of 22 or something, the red curve is not the curve that we have to consider anymore, but we have to consider the blue curve. And that is not always known. So when we use this method, we have this disadvantage that we are only looking at the critical path itself and not at the near critical path. Now, in case we have more than one critical path, okay, that's great, we know those different critical paths, then we have to consider the critical path with the highest standard deviation to look at the probabilities. So here we have to be careful about the profile, the S-curve that we are going to select. This was the exercise about the standard deviation, the uh, probabilistic approach to project management duration. We will look at different methods like Monte Carlo in other presentations and I will give you some exercises about that principle. I'm looking forward to seeing you in one of our next presentations, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can enjoy all the presentations that we can offer you. Thank you very much and bye-bye.